If you talk to Christians for any length of time, you probably hear them mention a book called the Bible and how important it is and how it is important to read it. Well, why? Why is it important to read the Bible? I was asking myself that same question and I grew up around Christians and in church. See, I'm a, I'm a checklist person. I like to get things done and checklists are so fun because they show how well you're doing. <laughs> They're really encouraging. So, you know, I'll put all the stuff I have to do on a checklist for the day, all the, the tasks and the chores, the wash the dishes, the do the laundries, the clean up after things. But listen, I also add stuff that I've already done because it feels great to, to be checking stuff off. So wake up, get out of bed. A friend told me this one, make list. I write that on the list and then I can check it off. And I don't just check it off, I check it off and I scratch it out with like the biggest pen I can find. I love that feeling of getting things done. And here's the problem. I was reading the Bible, but I was approaching it like it was a checklist. I used these things called reading plans where it would have you know, a number of chapters of this book that you should be reading it every day. And I would try to follow them. And I was just checking it off like it was a checklist. And I read this chapter, this chapter, this chapter. And at the end of it, I felt like I didn't really get much out of it. You know, some sometimes, but not often. And I was starting to get a little bit dis disillusioned with it. And so out of that, that frustration, I actually started reading totally different. It wasn't even a really good motivation. I just decided I'm just going to read a little bit until something happens and then I'm going to stop. I'm not going to just go through these mountains of text. So I just started reading a little bit, verse two, sometimes three, and sometimes something would just like pop off the page for me and I would just stop and I would start to chew on that idea and think about it. In fact, later on, like a long time later, I was reading Psalm one, which is part of the Bible. And it talks about meditating. And that word meditating there is actually this word haga, which means like murmur, mutter, but also it can mean to chew on something like a lion chews on a bone as it's, it's eating like this, this enjoyment, this haga, haga, haga. It's like an automatopoeia, like a, that type of word. And I realized later on that reading just a few verses and waiting for something to pop and then thinking about it, that was me doing what the Bible talks about doing. I was reading slowly and I was haggaying on the text and something happened that I had no expectation of. It wasn't just that I was learning more information and getting greater depth and understanding of what was happening in the, in the text. I was actually experiencing a person. I was experiencing the God who was described about in the Bible and not just knowing him more either, but actually experiencing a closeness, a relationship, a presence as I was reading. You know, I, I think this is something that you could experience too. We've got some resources that could be very helpful to you. There's in the description below, there's a link to a video series called How to Read the Bible. And it gives you a fantastic overview of what the Bible really is and how to engage with it and to get closer to it. But maybe for you, you might just wanna start reading the Bible. I, if you're gonna start anywhere, I would recommend the biographies of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are four people who gave an account of the life of Jesus. And John's is probably the one I would start with. In its pages, you'll find a loving, gracious, and compassionate life lived out by Jesus. And you could just read a verse or two at a time. Think about it, Haga on it and let it kind of percolate in your heart. I know when I did that, it absolutely transformed my life.